All righty. Welcome. This is Martina Wing, live from Hawaii. I can see I'm live. Got already my first viewer. There's uh, Tara, as always, from Mexico. Thank you so much. So welcome. It's Wednesday, uh, 11 o'clock. My name is Martina Wing. I'm always live uh, from Hawaii at this time of the week. And uh, I talk about the man rays. So I'm a man advocate. I love these creatures. I'm with them for 20 years. And I always like to inform um, folks that are interested in the animal or coming to Kona to um, swim with the man rays to tell them what's going on out here. And I hope you enjoyed a little bit the beginning with the movie. And that's always my introduction to get you into the mood to be in Hawaii with me. But uh, what we really talk about is the man rays and a quick introduction where I live and what I do. And then Tara, just let me know also about sound, if that's um, all good, um, if there are any problems, let me know. So leave a comment anyway, if there's anything. Julia is here too, from Germany. I'm going international again. I love this. Alrighty, so where do I live? I live on the big island of Hawaii. This is the map. Um, and then I live in, at the, um, in Kalua Kona. That's the airport, and that's Keaho. I understand that this is um, mirrored now, but I have to print it out. So I used to be on the phone. Now I'm on a, on a Mac, so it's, uh, I'm going to upgrade that soon. But I just wanted, want you to know where I live uh, in Kalua Kona. I'm very, very involved into the manta industry for about 20 years as a professional underwater photographer. I have been at the sites forever. I have several thousand dives with them. And I'm very, very passionate and knowledgeable and like to share that with everybody. Now, today um, is um, a Facebook Live that is about um, rulemaking. And the state of Hawaii is coming in to regulate the, the tourism industry that's connected to viewing mantas here along the coastline and I'm really waiting for this to happen for a long long time and so this Facebook live is about a little history telling uh, what happened last weekend also a man I got um, badly injured uh, I want to show you um, San Francisco Frank is here hello Frank and then um, tell you about what's um, you know, a little history uh, if you've never really heard about it that it's a problem out here and then uh, I do want to show you the draft rules today because um, when I go to town sometimes and I talk to po folks, locals, um, they always say, I never know what's going on. And um, many people are informed, but pretty much only the operators in town uh, are informed. And um, I'm also a little bit connected. At, not, um, I'm not a boat operator, but um, I know a lot what's going on behind the scenes. And I feel um, everybody should know about what's happening, what's coming down the pipe for the operators, for the consumer. And uh, actually, I think it's all good things happening. Alrighty, so um, so what I really want you to do today is give me a like or give me um, a following because if you want to stay connected to this, then uh, you will be informed if you follow us as Manor Advocates here on Facebook. So I definitely want you to um, help me out with that so I can keep people informed and uh, share the information. Alrighty, so... Um, Amsterdam, I like it, I like it, we're going international, no, we are always international every week, especially with my accent from Germany, but I am in Hawaii and I live here for a long time, and I love it, and I hope you can come here as, uh, one day as well. Alrighty, so to dive into this, I do want to tell you a story, what happened last weekend, um, so sun Sunday night, uh, one of the manorays got badly injured, and about eight months ago, another manorway got badly injured, and what that means is actually, um, it was driven over by a by a boat. And it's always a concern out here that um, manorays are basking on the surface and just hanging out. And when boats come into the bay, um, they're in danger because when boats don't look out, have a lookout. Um, and now I just want you to be ready. I have some pictures here. It's not that cruel, but it's a little bit cruel. But I do want you to understand that it's really serious for the animals here along the coastline, what's happening. Not too many people out there. So I'm going to share the screen real quick. And I'm trying to get to the pictures. Let me just show you. Nope, that's the wrong picture. I'm not very savvy on this here. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like when a manorail gets driven over. You see right here is um, the cuts from the propeller. This is for Vicky Ray about eight months ago. And then we have another picture of Vicky Ray right here. Yeah. And then let's, last weekend, I, I got the email at I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. This is fresh. This is from Sunday night. Um, a man ray was basking on the surface. And um, there has been actually TV coverage on this. I'm going to give you the link in the description. Uh, KHON2 um, went into this. So um, what happened here is the man ray was at 5 o'clock still healthy. And uh, then on, at 7 o'clock um, it had this damage to its back. And um, this is pretty cool, but that's the truth here. 
uh, we are in a state here with this um, with the animals that they're just not safe anymore and uh, let me go back to my my Facebook live um, ooh, I don't know how to do that now here you go so I uh, just want to give you so the, the situation is really serious for the animals they're getting chopped up at this point um, we maybe even lost lefty two years ago because of an incident like this and what it is boots just boats just come too fast into the situation and unfortunately um, today you can sign up for this activity and you end up with 20 uh, boats out here and uh, 400 people you make really 400 new friends while you're in the water uh, enjoying these animals and the state of Hawaii is coming in with proposed rules to reduce the numbers and all kinds of things um, let me see Zach make a comment um, mm, yeah yep and you know for me it's just like I want people to enjoy the man rays I want people to see the man rays but I also want to make sure that they are safe and uh, unfortunately this industry has grown so much let me dive into the history a little bit 1991 one boat a week went once a week to the site and it was Keaho down south and uh, of course that is definitely sustainable one boat it's not very much impact if you're in passive interaction this is totally fine and then since 1991 all the way to pretty much 2012 the, there was a healthy growth um, anybody both were benefiting I think the manor is a fit benefit too they just get an easy meal passive interaction let us do their thing around the lights and then 2012 it kind of went downhill and since then it's going downhill but it has really uh, sped up quite a bit since 2015 anyway 2012 the first boat came in and what was introduced was hall lighting and the fragmentation fragmentation is you don't have one viewing area anymore you have maybe multiples and you as a consumer can go there and then um, if one manor is in the bay and there's several areas where you can um, have lights where the manor is could feed you maybe don't even see the manor and you paid a lot of money to do it so fragmentation is really a problem Hall lighting is a really big problem. Hall lighting means you attract the manor ray to um, an area, uh, or to your boat actually, where light is installed inside the hall and you can concentrate plankton there. And then for 30 years we tell the animals, come to the light, it's a safe place. Uh, now they actually run into the propellers and the ladders uh, because the light is right by the hardware of the boat. Really big deal. Um, what else uh, was introduced? Yeah, there was a release of permits. Dale and I had uh, to release permits at, uh, I think, 2015. Uh, it was to so counterproductive to get even more people to the sites, uh, more and more people, more snorkel boats especially, and uh, jumped on the chance to be on the Manta train, the gravy train, to show people this amazing adventure. And uh, don't get me wrong, I want people to enjoy that, but everything needs to be sustainable. And so more permits were released, uh, fragmentation, hall lighting, uh, what else was, yeah, with that overcrowding. Voluntary standards were created in 2013, but, um, you know, we had quite a few people. What that means were created, there was a working group. People came together every Tuesday for three months. Uh, a really good document, six-page document were created, how to do the manor dive, safe for everybody involved. But people actually left the room. Um, there were probably 30, 20, 30 people all the time there to work together. And these were the operators, the people that actually make a living of this. People left the room and said, voluntary, a gentleman agreement. Oh, I don't really care. I'm not, I'm not a gentleman. I just want to run my business, and I don't really care about you over there and you over there. So all these things happened since 2012. Um, and then we're today in the place where, and I get to this in a second, 51 companies uh, offer the mentor experience to consumers, to the people uh, coming to us. Guys, if I, I'm really sorry when I don't uh, answer any um, comments right now because I'm really trying to concentrate to get to the point of the draft rules so you guys know about it. Um, thanks for making comments, but I'll get back to this uh, later on. It's, um, <laughs> it's multitasking and it's really hard for me. So, um, so yeah, that's the history since 2012. Um, things are not going well. Um, we are in 2014, the legislation said, Delana, that's the Department of Land and Natural Resources, you have to do something about it. 2015, they came in, a very nice lady started to work with us, community meetings, back and forth, how can we do it, win-win for everybody. And then last year in April, two years later, the first set of draft rules were, it was a meeting. It was said on April 1st, I remember the day, April 1st, uh, we're going to do this, uh, it should be by the April 30th, should be. Um, the draft rule should be brought to the um, Attorney General, so then the process starts and 11 months process from drafting 
submitting drafting to actually implementing is 11 months. Let's make it a year. Unfortunately, a few days after April 1st, this particular lady is the key person at the DLNR for us. Um, quit. Gone. And this delayed everything again. So we're now in 2018 and the draft rule was done, um, come, came out on Monday. So Sunday night, my Eli Ray, that's the man Ray that got badly injured. Uh, that was Sunday night, Monday night, um, Monday afternoon, we got the email about the draft rules that I'm going to get to it right now. And then, um, then um, Monday night, it was on KH on KHON2 on TV coverage. So, and I'm going to put the, descri the description later on the link to the TV. Um, and I will also give you that um, document I'm going to show you now. So if you want to look at this a little bit more, I just want to get to this right now. So let's see how I get to this. I have to go to share my screen and then I have to show you this. So by the way, this is uh, the, the summary of the draft rules. And then there is another, and this is how it looks like. If you look at the actual ruling, the administrative rules, I want to explain that real quick. The administrative rules means the Department of Land and Natural Resources has, I don't know, 300 um, rules, you know, and we live under this. And, you know, if anything happens to land and ocean and, and resources, it has to be uh, regulated. And now this uh, draft rule is 36 pages. So I'm not going to go into this. I'm going to go into the other one, the summary. But that gives you an idea. Um, it's quite a process to get somewhere. So, and this is uh, what I want to zoom into a little bit. Um, I hope, how do I get to zoom now? Uh, I just pull this down. I want to get to this page here so you can see what's going to happen. So these are the viewing um, proposed rule changes. And I'm going to go fast through this with a little commentary, but what's going to happen is, um, or what we hope that's going to happen is still now a phase that um, the manner is, excuse me, a phase that people can make comments. You can make comments too. And if you look at this, um, a little bit closer, when I put it into the comment section, you can actually have an email address and you can make your comments. So there will be public hearings and there will also be the land board has to approve everything. So through the process, we still have time to do things and you can make your commentary if you want this uh, to happen. Okay, so here I'm going to go for this pink or uh, purple block. The first thing that's going to happen is no more, no more anchoring inside the boundaries. So there will be a certain area around Keaho and the Garniel Cove, that's the airport location, that um, is from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. dedicated to the Manta viewing areas. And um, so no anchoring. So we're going to eliminate uh, really trashing the reef, which has happened many times. Um, I have other Facebook lives, if you want to dive into this, where I showed really awful footage, actually, and I told you about these problems. So then every operator in the 51 that are applying for it um, will probably get a permit, but there's actually an exclusion. You have to do business since 2015 more than once a week for the Manta activity. So, but there will be a permit required. And then uh, lifeboating is only, well, you drive to the site and you exit the site through so ingress, egress, and of course emergency. And, but lifeboating will be eliminated. That's a really big deal because this is, um, um, so dangerous out there. I've been driven over at the site several times. And uh, it's, for me, mind-boggling how a captain um, even thinks, like, like the slightest amount of thinking is like, how can this be safe to be in the dark on the ocean and then have your propellers running and you don't have your eyes behind you. You just, you know, you're on your boat by yourself and then you drive around. And anyway, it will be eliminated. Um, to only um, driving in and out. Um, that's a really big one. The next one is prohibit subsurface vessel lighting right here. That means no more hall lighting. Um, the animals will be safe, much, much safer from now on, and they cannot um, um, be attracted to the boats anymore and then get injured. Um, then there are some non-motorized vessels. Uh, so one kayak company that I know of, they have to have lights on it. Because, yes, it needs to be a rule. People come out there and in total, total darkness, we cannot even see them. Then, um, this is another biggie for me. This is called uh, the confinement activities to designated campfire areas. Campfire is uh, one viewing area and nobody else. Uh, you, 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 we have one viewing area. Everybody has to come to one place. And it's kind of campfire method. 
and it's the best way for everybody to see it, to keep everybody safe. And there's so many pluses to this, um, no more all over the place and spreading out the areas. <clears throat> now in Keaho, that is actually, that's the official name, Kaka Lele. Uh, Keaho, you're not allowed to do scuba tours. Um, then the next one is um, moorings. Um, that means how the boat will be tied up because you know, nobody can anchor anymore. Uh, the moorings have to be used. Um, we used to do um, daisy chaining, so two boats and one mooring. This is, as far as I know, not allowed anymore. And then it will be first come, first served. And um, there will be two and a half hour limit per use. So this definitely cuts down a lot of things. Uh, if you don't have a boat to park on the mooring, you can't go and do the activity. If you're too late, well, too bad, right? Um, and then the next one is, um, some people have an issue with that, but I'm actually a big part of, um, um, supporter of this. Um, participant to, to guide ratio will not exceed six to one. So if you think of safety and how you feel about this um, um, going on a spectacular experience, seeing big ocean, big animals in the ocean at night, and you know you can, you will have one guide and he only has to take care of, she has to take care of six people. This is definitely the safest way to go. Um, I still try to figure out if it's only for divers, but I hope it is also for snorkelers because I want you to imagine right now people have up, um, I think it's already too many when you have 10 or 12 on a snorkel board. It's kind of a board that people control and have to keep the people together. Um, but we have groups that have up to 25 um, people on a long, long um, board and uh, sometimes only one or two people to take care of these guys. So um, a ratio of one to six, I totally support this. Um, and everybody has to, every operator here has to change their their method of operation, and that's just the way it is. You know, it's like it doesn't work anymore the way it goes right now. Believe it or not, there used to be fishing, and certain people have been observed on the manta activity where the captain was so bored, I just put in a, uh, did some fishing while the people are in the water, a fishing line, right? Uh, uh, unbelievable to me, but it had to go into the rules. Um, and then people have to stay, the boats have to stay at the site while there are. Um, uh, while the activity is going on, you cannot leave the zone while the people are in the water. And I think that's also a really good rule. It's going to be hard to uh, implement because if you have uh, people, maybe a small family, a small group, a small family, people get cold, they want to go home. They have to stay, sit at the side longer until actually everybody's out of the water. And that's fine with me. You know, we have to do much better as the humans. We know much better. We have to do better. And that's just fine. All right, so this was the rules um, that are proposed, but there's a little bit more that I want to show you. It's called an OMA will be created. That means an ocean recreation man management area. Again, it's for Keaho and Garden Eel Cove, the airport location only. Um, and then everything else, if you go there to the certain other times of the day, you have just normal rules. Then um, this is an interesting one. Um, people have to pay for a permit. And the permit will be 100 bucks per month. So if you run a boat operation in um, for the Mantas, you have $1,200 in permits. I think that's nothing because one customer pays for it per month. Um, and that mon money will be actually used for maintenance, repair, manta observation program, uh, supplemental inform inform enforcement, education, outreach, administrative. So I think that is money well, well spent. Uh, I hope it's all going to come to um, fruition. Um, because still people can make comments and um, maybe some stuff will be moved around. I'm totally for this. Um, there are a few things I'm, I have very, um, I'm going to go back to my screen. Give me a second. Um, all right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I'm hoping I'm very close to someone who's working on these um, papers. Uh, there's a few more other things that I hope um, I will comment on. Um, because uh, there's one of the uh, concerns that um, you have these OMAs, we have a certain area uh, established, and then a boat operator that doesn't get a man manta permit is going to be just outside that certain OMA and uh, sets up another manta site, or at least he is attracting with lights and animals, the animals away from the actual activity site. And the question is how big of an area should be around this OMA that people cannot even do this. Um, there's some... Um, discussions about this. I think uh, you should not have the ability to do that at all. I think we should really be strong and that only permits, uh, boats with permits should uh, get a, can do the mantas. 
but uh, I think we came a long way since 2012, where it went downhill and where we are today. Alrighty, so I'm going to look at some comments real quick, if that's okay with you guys. Looks a little funny when I look in the camera. Let's see if I can get this over. Okay. Yeah, Megan, those numbers are insane. 400 people in the water. Yeah, it's um, when you come here during the times, um, like in Thanksgiving or on the high times, uh, 4th of July, everybody's in town, you know, uh, 400 people. It's easy. And then because right now people are stacking up, you know, some people go early, um, some people come at the normal time, and some people come late. There's always boats going out, and it's so many people in the water, and yeah, it's dark, you know, it's pretty dark out there. So, um, and then Heather, yeah, you will watch it later, Heather. I just want to say I saw your comment, um, and if you have any comments now and have any questions, please ask away. But uh, we can also do it in the comment section. I don't want to make this Facebook um, Facebook Live too long, but this Facebook is uh, this live is about educating as many people as I can what's happening, what's coming, and um, you will find in the description um, the KHON2 coverage from this week where you see more footage of this animal being um, propped. Um, pretty sad. I think he will survive, but uh, it's, it's such an unnecessary situation that we're in. And then, um, what else, um, what I want to say, um, I forgot, <laughs> so anyway, so, um, I hope you enjoyed this Facebook live, it was very much on the serious side, but, um, I always like to keep it happy and light, but not today, um, actually, I'm hopeful that, uh, things are moving along, a uh, little downer, I do have to do at the end, again, I'm repeating this, um, it takes about 11 months after this draft rule is submitted to the uh, Attorney General, so we still have one year to go to make the mantis world safer. Um, I sure hope we get there as fast as possible, not, 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 many, not many more hurdles. Until then, uh, give me a like, give me a share. If this is something that really interests you, uh, click on follow us instead of just liking us. Uh, when you follow us, you will be um, notified when I go live and uh, do other stuff, but also we'll keep you posted on what's going on here with, with the man race in Kona, Hawaii. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll talk to you later. I'm back next week. And I think I'm going to do a special on Lefty. Lefty is a man I've saw for a long, long time, since 1979 till 2016. Very special mentor. And with that, talk to you later. Bye-bye.